Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I only wanted to clear it up because there, were, there was a, a report in one uh, newspaper this year about an involvement I had and unfortunately I was incorrectly quoted. Um, the middle of last year um, I was asked by the Leagues Club in particular, uh, in fact I was not asked by the Football Club, I was asked by the Leagues Club my thoughts on some business matters pertaining not to just the future direction of the club in the area of football from the Leagues Club support point of view but uh, matters pertaining to, as Gary mentioned before, the Olympic tenderers and the Leagues Club having a role to play with that. At the time there was opportunity for them to pursue some meetings with some business people who I won't name at the moment but as soon as I was presented with those names I immediately suggested to the club that they would be crazy not to talk to News Limited, the most powerful media corporation in the world and a corporation that has taken soccer from the doldrums to a to a higher level of a playing field in Europe. They have picked up the National Football League in America, the gridiron, and taken it to record ratings and turnover. And I honestly believe in my heart then that why couldn't players and coaches, the principals of the game, have the opportunity to go to a higher playing level? Why can't our players, all players, not just Bulldogs players, but all players, have the opportunity to be the professionals that the sportsmen are in Europe and in America? Why couldn't it happen? I believed in it. I never had personal meetings in any of those dealings with Ken Cowley from News Limited. I'd only met him twice in my life. And once was when I sued his newspaper. And he tried to talk me out of it, but thankfully on that occasion I won the court case. That was one of the business meetings I had with him. Throughout all of those stages, it became difficult for this club because we had, sitting with us, a current board member of the Australian Rugby League. Peter Moore went through the toughest period in his life and had to make a decision to walk away as a board member of a national body. But not just that, the whole drama has split friendships, great friends. His greatest friend in life was Ken Arthurson. If you could imagine that you have to make a decision one way or the other, he had on this given day Ken Arthurson or his club. We all know there are things worth fighting for. He chose Canary Bankstown. It was a crucial period in this club's history and he made a tough call. You know, I, I look around here today and I don't spend probably as much time as I should in this club, but I was here when it was Belmore Oval, then Sports Ground and Berries to Bulldogs. Do you really think that we're going to walk away From the Gartners, the Charltons, the Mortimers, the Swanbergs, the Terry Lambs, Neville Horney's here today. Are we going to walk away from those? Do you think we're not going to embrace them? Do you think we're not going to embrace them into the Halligans, the Hedlingtons, the players of our future? I mean, that's loyalty, that's tradition, and we want to get on with it. I consider it in 1908, can we all understand what went through the people's minds when they walked away from rugby and rugby league started? Can you imagine the terms? Traders, rebels. You know why they did it? Money. They had ability. They wanted to get paid. And what's wrong with that? Some of us might grow up to be garbos. Some of us might one day be prime ministers of Australia. Why can't we achieve what we want to achieve? And we're not going to get anywhere without money. And I laugh when I read some of the staggering comments about Stop Murdoch Now. Can we, anybody in this country, honestly believe that one of the greatest businessmen in the world might throw a couple hundred million dollars at a game and long term it can't be better? Can you honestly believe that? took out American citizenship, okay, took out American citizenship. He made a business decision. He's not a rugby league fan, he's a businessman. But he knows that if his businesses are running hand in hand with a great product, everybody stands to be successful. The Australian Rugby League had the opportunity when they commissioned their own report in 1991, the Bradley Report. Told them everything that they knew. They already knew that we had too many Sydney teams. So okay, there's a board that says in 1992, we've got a big problem. 
because we commissioned that report with a view to 1995 when we're going to bring in four new teams. And it told them, geez, if you bring in the four new teams and keep the same number of Sydney teams, you've got a major headache. They knew it in 1991 and 1992. So in 1992, as a board, what did they do? Nothing. 93, they didn't do anything. 94, they didn't make any other business decision. In 95, they still didn't do anything, but they brought in the four teams. But all of a sudden, we've got people jumping up now on stage and saying, hang on, Rupert Murdoch just jumped out of a tree. No, he didn't. We knew the problem ourselves many years ago. And we didn't act. The gentleman before stood up and talked about us making decisions without calling a referendum or calling all the members together to get your viewpoints. It's just like the Australian Rugby League. When you have a general meeting, when you have an opportunity and your board doesn't act, well then you have the right to vote them out. Let's just say there was the, the Sydney Bulldogs, Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, and you went to an annual general meeting and all of a sudden the extraordinary meeting was called because all of a sudden you heard about this terminology, the Super Bulldogs. And at that meeting you found out that this board was not aware of the Super Bulldogs five minutes ago. This board was aware that it could have happened five years ago. I wonder what your feelings would be at that meeting. You wouldn't have a lot of confidence in your board. If they were aware of it, should have been ahead of it four and five years ago. I'm not here to personally pick people out of the Australian Rugby League other than I do stand for the Australian Rugby League. I believe in what the Australian Rugby League stands for. I believe in its very best endeavours. But any organisation can be brought down by mistakes by individual people. If we get to the end of the compromise, I hope the ARL is still standing in a strong and official capacity. But our job is blue and white. Our job is getting on with our life and mingling our history and the names that I mentioned with those of our future. It's just a simple case of change. I honestly believed in it. And if my recommendations to the guys up here on the stage to go and speak to Ken Cowley of New Zealand, if that is to cause trouble, if I am to be proved wrong, then I would apologise in time and I would very simply walk away because I would not be, want to be a party to anything that stands and divides this club. I believe in it and I believe that you can have a nation that can defend against an armed invasion. But the more I thought about Super League, you might be able to defend against an armed invasion, but you honestly and sincerely can't defend against a good idea whose time has come. Thank you very much.